All right, ladies and gents, this is a part two of my video on how to decalcify the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland, just to recap for those who aren't aware, is a tiny, uh, it's a tiny gland located basically directly in the middle of the two hemispheres of your brain, responsible for your connection to your soul, to the spirit world, to all sorts of things like this. It's also very involved in the dreaming process. And, uh, but for most people, it's calcified, meaning there are phosphate crystals that are formed which have crystallized and hardened around the pineal gland, meaning that it's basically nowhere near as effective as it should be or could be. Now, there are a number of ways to essentially decalcify the pineal gland and activate it once more so that you can start utilizing the abilities that the pineal gland will allow you to experience. Now, there's a number of things that we could hit, that we could uh, explain here, but firstly, let me just very briefly recap. In the last video, we explained that the pineal gland for most people is calcified, meaning there are phosphate crystals that are formed around the pineal gland, which stop the, the true potential of the pineal gland being unleashed. The good news is it's possible to decalcify this. So let's just jump right in, and I'm going to start by explaining exactly how you can decalcify your pineal gland. Now, as I've explained before, there are various reasons you'd want to do this. I'm actually gonna make another video um, very soon. So subscribe to this channel and, and look out for that. I'm gonna make a video explaining why you would want to dehousify your pineal gland and why you would want to activate it and use it more often. However, in this video, I'm just gonna explain how to decalcify it. So, number one, and this is probably the most important, you need to avoid what's known as scat. Now, scat is a term which, if you've done any sort of dieting, any working on your health or things like this, you would have come across the term avoid scat. Basically, scat just stands for sugar, caffeine, so this is things like coffee, energy drinks, alcohol, and tobacco. Now, unfortunately, the vast majority of people, especially in the Western world, the vast majority of people, this is a huge uh, part of their daily life. They have lots of sugar. They drink several cups of coffee a day. They drink alcohol at the weekends or in the evenings, and they smoke tobacco. These four things, especially combined, are basically destroying your pineal gland, as well as other areas of your health and wellness and, and your body. So, and I'm sure, I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise. If you really think about it, you know this, anyway. You, it's sort of self-explanatory. It's common sense. You know these things are bad for you. But in terms of the pineal gland, in ter relative to its mass, okay, relative to its size, the pineal gland gets the most blood flow of any other organ in the body. Meaning anything, like especially these four things that you put into your bloodstream, are going to flow directly to your pineal gland and influence it and, and manipulate it more than anything else. So it's even more important to avoid these bad stimulants here if you want to decalcify your pineal gland. Now the next thing, it goes without saying that fluoride is a poison. It literally was first used in the Nazi concentration camps when they wanted to subdue the people and make them docile, weak, and essentially degrade their health slowly over time as a form of torture. Fluoride is bad news, it's poison. And if you actually look on the back of your toothpaste uh, tube, you will see that it says if you consume more than a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, you need to co contact poison control because it's dangerous. Now, they wouldn't put that, and bear in mind, in toothpaste, there's actually a very low percentage of fluoride. So in a, in a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, there might be like a speck of fluoride. And even that, even that speck is dangerous enough that they have to legally put on the bottom of the toothpaste tube contact poison control if you consume this, even that one speck of fluoride, because they know it's dangerous. However, for various reasons, they insist on uh, keeping fluoride in toothpaste, um, despite claims, despite evidence, I should say, that it doesn't help with tooth decay, it doesn't help prevent tooth problems, it's basically a poison that is used by the government and other forms of uh, systems of control to keep you docile and weak, in term, especially in terms of your pineal gland. But that's an entirely other, you know, there's a whole conspiracy around that. I'm not going to go too much into that. But you want to basically, you want to get fluoride-free toothpaste. And this can be in the form of aloe vera-based toothpaste. There are loads of options you have these days. Basically, just look in the ingredients of the things you consume, especially your toothpaste, and avoid anything with fluoride inside it. That's all you need to do. 
Now I should also mention that water in most parts of the US and also some parts of Europe is fluoridated, meaning the government and the uh, systems which control the water supply pump fluoride into the water uh, in, in hopes of, I guess, reducing tooth decay. That's what they publicly say, but the real reason is a bit more sinister. However, this is not the end of the world. You can actually get uh, filters, okay? You can buy filters which plug into your tap. They're not cheap, but they are very worth getting, I would say, especially when you consider the downsides and, and dangers of fluoride. Um, essentially, this is the cost you, you have to pay these days to have clean drinking water. Um, now, don't worry, obviously fluoride filters are expensive, but it's not the end of the world. And when you compare it to third world countries where they can't even have clean drinking water, having to spend you know a few hundred dollars on a fluoride filter is really not the end of the world at all, especially when you're going to feel the effects, you're going to feel the benefits just from having that fluoride-free water. All right, next thing, vegetables. Fruit and vegetables, which, by the way, you should be eating lots of, um, they will be coated in most cases, if you don't get organic fruit and veg, in pesticides. Now pesticides are essentially poison, they do contain sometimes traces of fluoride, but mainly it's just other heavy metals and bad chemicals. All you want to do is avoid non-organic as much as possible, so you want to try and go and buy organic fruit and veg as much as you can. If you have to get non-organic, then just wash it. Just give it a good rinse under some cold running water, which also should be fluoride free. Um, and that will get rid of the vast majority of pesticides from the fruit and veg. Okay, so the next thing. Like I say, you should be eating raw fruit and veg as much as possible. That's not always the case. You will have to also get your calories from things like starches, rice, potatoes, pasta, that sort of thing. However, raw fruit and veg should be a large part of your diet. That's There's no debate about that. You know, if you really think about it and if you research it enough, you will figure out that especially if you look at things like the China study, um, the, the raw plant-based diet is the healthiest. So go raw as much as possible, incorporate raw uh, or plant-based things into your diet as much as you can. Now garlic is a good antioxidant, it's also a good uh, way of detoxifying yourself from the effects of fluoride and from, it's a good way of decalcifying the pineal gland. So you want to look at getting some garlic. The way, the way I do this is I just have a, a, a jar of garlic sprinkles, you know, ground garlic, and I just apply it to most of the meals I cook, especially if I'm starting with like an, a base of onions and mushrooms, which I start most of my meals from that base, then you can just apply some garlic to that while you're frying the onions or whatever, and that's gonna get your garlic in your diet. Now, another thing you can do which would, would, would uh, help you detoxify from the effect of fluoride is you can consume some citric acid. This is mainly found in your diet, but there are other forms of this as well. Now, another really powerful superfood actually is turmeric. Now this is that yellowy sort of golden powder that you've many maybe seen uh, it's, it's used in many curry dishes, many uh, Indian dishes and uh, all sorts of things like that. It's very cheap, very easy to buy and you don't actually need a lot of it. You just need maybe one spoonful of this a day, one teaspoonful and that will be enough to get you the benefits. It's going to detoxify yourself and it's going to help decalcify the pineal gland. Very very important. It's also got a number of health benefits uh, across the board so very worth getting getting some turmeric. Now the next thing, if you actually have already consumed a lot of fluoride, which most people have, you know, through water and toothpaste, etc., you can actually consume iodine supplements. Now this is a natural way of detoxifying yourself and removing the fluoride from your pineal gland and from your system. So detoxing with iodine is recommended, uh, but do your research, you know, check the dosages, check the interactions with other things you might be taking, and, uh, and go from there. All right, so the next thing is you need to make sure you get lots of sunlight. Sunlight is gonna really help with your health, not just with detoxifying and, and unlocking your pineal gland, but just in general. So get outside in the first hour of the day, get lots of sunlight, exercise, sleep, meditation. These things are all gonna massively help with detoxifying and uh, unlocking the pineal gland. So this is, as I said, this is a basic video. I just wanted to explain a bit more about how to detoxify and decalcify the pineal gland. You can find this stuff on my website. I'm gonna to link to the blog post in the description. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and bear in mind this is a long journey. This won't happen overnight, okay? So take this step by step. Really take the time to decalcify and detox yourself from these the bad effects of fluoride and make sure to leave a comment letting me know how you get on and I'll see you next time.